Hello. How wonderful to be here in this situation. And uh, welcome, everyone. It's great to see you here. And when I see you here, of course, I don't mean literally. Uh, I mean that metaphorically. And I suppose if I was sufficiently clairvoyant, I could see everyone. Uh, and so let's let's begin our time together. I, I, I reckon let's let's spend let's see how it goes. But maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, um, just however long feels right. And of course, the wonderful thing about this meeting is at the back and nobody knows. So let's take the opportunity of this extraordinary technology to tune in and just spend a moment just being together, imagining that we're in a sacred grove. It's as if we've come into a clearing and we're together and there are people from all over the world uh, together in this moment. And so this is a moment to connect with our deep inner selves, to with, to the, and with the reality that is beyond this technology, beyond the machines we're sitting in front of, a reality that is far deeper and more mysterious. And then I open my eyes and you open your eyes and we're here. And what I wanted to talk about was just to take the topic of the goals of the Druid. What are we actually seeking as Druids or if we're contemplating following, following the Druid spiritual path? But first of all, let's see uh, where you're from. Type in, just type in with where from it'll be so interesting to see where people are coming from which part see it popping up on the side there and i guess you'll be able to see it running down uh the front but it'll be just great to get a feeling for uh for who's here and um and and i need to work out too where i'm where where i look i'm not quite sure where i look in order to be looking directly if i look straight ahead i seem to be looking down which i'm not uh but if i look at my hair up there i think i'm looking straight ahead uh new york state washington new hampshire that's great that's one of the reasons i i chose this time of day too uh, so what are the goals of a druid why would we even bother with following a druid spiritual path it seems so out of date doesn't it uh here we are in the 21st century and we're suggesting that perhaps we should follow the ways uh, of our ancestors thousands of years ago. Well, Druidry is a modern movement and it draws on the inspiration of the past. But I certainly believe that a spiritual tradition comes from the world outside of time. It comes from a spiritual dimension that isn't bounded by linear time. And so it's living and real and vital now. And the goals that we in the Order of Bards, Ovates and Druids set for ourselves is a threefold goal of love, wisdom and creativity. Now, this isn't set in stone. You could choose other goals for why you follow the Druid path. But this is a suggestion. Uh, love, wisdom, creativity. Why love? Well, love is at the heart of the mystical experience. When you have profound spiritual experiences. One of the characteristics of these experiences is a profound sense of love for all of life, a sense of unity, a sense of oneness, and a sense of love. So I think at the heart of the spiritual life is a belief, an understanding, a position that says, this is the bottom line. This is at the heart of life love oh i'm seeing hello from poland and somerset and lincoln nebraska and alabama and north devon merseyside dordrecht in holland fantastic so yes love is at the heart of things and in fact do you know something really interesting uh for 20 years when uh at the druid camps that that we held which have become uh, a whole load of camps now all over the place uh, in Obod, i remember after five or six years uh, asking everybody at the camp why they were there and I figured they would say they were with us. They, would, they had all come together at the camp because they wanted to learn about Druidry 
and they wanted to be close to nature, sleeping out in tents, you know, close to nature. But you know what 99.9% .9 of people said? They said they were there for community. They were there for each other. They wanted that sense of community. And I think that's why we need to embrace these new forms of technology and communication. It's very easy for us to be dismissive about them. There are so many demands made on our time and our attention. It's easy to see the internet as yet another drain on our energies. But it's neutral, of course. And when used in the right way, I think it can really bring us together. And that's the spirit in which I'm using it now, so that we're all coming together. I'm not holding forth like some guru giving you uh, uh, the truth from on high. I'm sharing suggestions, insights, my understanding, and I'll be really interested to hear your insights and understanding too. So at the heart of this uh, love of community and this need, it's simply love. And there's a way in which many of you may have got what we call the love poster in the office. It's, uh, it goes out with the introductory pack of the course, and it says something like Druid's love. And then it just lists all the things that we love, uh, the ancestors, the natural world, and so on. And uh, this, what we believe, I think, is in following the Druid way, this fosters and nurtures that flame of love that exists in the hearts of us all. Now, the other, the other goal that uh, we suggest is uh, spirituality, is creativity. And this is, I think, a rather interesting uh, aspect of the spiritual path. Uh, I'm familiar with quite a lot of different spiritual traditions and paths. And whilst many of them foster creativity and, of course, tremendous works of art, come from the Christian tradition, the, all the major religions and minor religions, uh, they foster extraordinary sacred art and music and so on. But I think Druidry is unusual in that one of its goals is specifically, overtly enhancing our creativity. It says we are here on this planet not to figure out how to get away from the planet, to ascend to higher realms, uh, but we're here for a reason. And one of the reasons is this mysterious Arwen that we can allow to flow through us and which we can express in our lives and creatively. And you know, of course, that we interpret creativity in its widest sense. It's not that you have to be a Picasso or a Mozart in order, be, in order to be deemed creative. We can be creative in the way we relate to our friends, in the way we treat our children, in the way we run our household. We can be creative in a thousand ways. And Druidry has this incredible idea of Arwen, this idea that the cauldron of the goddess can be stirred, the mixture can be prepared, and if we're lucky and if we do the right work, we can receive drops of our when. And now the third goal, we have love, we have creativity, this wonderful way in which it's which we all have to develop our potential and to be fully creative. And then this third goal that we suggest, which is the goal of wisdom, seeking wisdom, finding wisdom, growing in wisdom. Now, this is interesting because if we think about it, many spiritual ways promote a slightly different or apparently different goal, which is enlightenment or illumination. So if you're a Buddhist, for instance, your primary goal is to seek enlightenment. Why isn't that a primary goal in Druidry? Well, here are some ideas. In the two foundational stories in the Druid tradition about seeking wisdom, the uh, story of the, uh, the salmon of knowledge or the salmon of wisdom that uh, Finicus is 
has been looking for for years by the river. And then the young boy, Finn McCool, comes along and he manages to catch the salmon. And Finnegan said, look, I've been waiting a long time for this. Uh, I'm getting first, the first taste of this salmon. It's for me. And of course, what happens is the young lad cooks the fish and it talks about how the skin, you know, where you, when you're frying a fish or something, the skin can bubble up. And he tries to burst this little bubble just to push it down. And three drops of salmon liquor scald him on his thumb. And he licks his thumb and he's immediately illumined. And he has tasted of the salmon of wisdom. And in the Irish story, Finnegan looks at him and says, uh, I can see by the light in your eye that you are the wise one. And so Finn McCool goes on to uh, have other adventures and Finnegan follows him. In the Irish version of the story, it's the goddess Caridwen, the figure of Caridwen. Uh, instead of it, the, the, the drops of Imas, uh, the drops of Arwen, and instead of coming from the salmon, they come from the cauldron, which bubbles up. Three drops splash on the thumb of Guion Bach, the young boy. He licks his thumb, he's illumined. And Caridwen takes a slightly different approach to him. She decides to eat him. But that, as they say, is another story. But both stories, if you think about it, have a moment of illumination in them. Illumination, enlightenment does occur, a great flash. And in the Welsh story, for instance, it recounts how at that moment, Guion Bach knows everything. He knows all of time, all of space. He knows and understands everything. And in that moment, too, he understands that he's going to be eaten by Caridwen, and so he runs for his life. So one way to look at it is this, which is that illumination is the gateway to wisdom. You become wise after you've become illumined. Illumination or enlightenment occur in discrete moments of time, specific moments of time. But wisdom is continuous. And so we focus on the destination rather than the, the medium through which we reach the destination. And if you think about it, this relationship uh, t between enlightenment and wisdom is, is, is very interesting. If I say to you, look, your goal is to become enlightened. Notice, notice how that feels. If I say your goal is to become enlightened. If your response is like mine, I will immediately see that goal ahead of me. I won't be feeling enlightened particularly right now. Uh, you might be lucky, of course, and that would be wonderful. But I suspect most of us, when we're presented with that goal, would sense it at some moment in the future. It's down the track. Maybe I'll never quite get there in this lifetime. Maybe if I meditate enough and do enough spiritual practices, at cer a certain time, I will gain enlightenment. That was certainly my feeling when I was 11 years old and read the, the life of the Buddha. Uh, for the first time and and was infused by this idea of gaining enlightenment and then spent years trying to reach this goal and What I discovered was that illumination Occurs in moments of time. There are moments of ecstasy of insight of uh, uh, Of illumination, but then one returns back to one's original state perhaps a little wiser perhaps with a little more insight. And so the journey continued. So if, if you have as a goal, the goal of enlightenment, which is a perfectly reasonable goal, obviously, in one way it acts like a carrot. It leads you on. So that's fantastic, marvelous. We want the goal of enlightenment. But the problem, it has a problem, which is that it sets up what is known in psychology as provisional living. Provisional living is where we don't fully open to being fully alive in this world because we're waiting for something to happen. We're waiting for the divorce. We're waiting for the wedding. We're waiting for the kids to leave home. We're waiting for the kids to be born. Whatever it is, we're waiting. We're waiting to retire before we do it. 
were waiting to change jobs or get the job or whatever. So it's always that little bit ahead of us, provisional living. It's something one has to kind of watch out for all the time, I think. So instead, so that's the, that's the tricky thing of, of, of looking for enlightenment. What if I suggested to you something else? What if I suggested to you that the goal was more about growing in wisdom? Finding wisdom, growing in wisdom. Immediately, when I hear that, I immediately relax. I immediately, suddenly, instead of the goal being there, it's here. Oh, growing, there's a little bit of wisdom, with a bit of light. There's the, the wisdom of my body. There's the wisdom of the heart, the wisdom of the mind. Uh, it may not be a lot, but I can plant seeds and I can let it grow. Immediately to me what happens is I get images related to plants, actually, in agriculture. It's organic. Growing, harvesting. Uh, it's, it's, it's a much gentler, perhaps it's a more yin, if we want to look at it in those terms, a more yin way of expressing this idea. Whereas uh, enlightenment is more yang, perhaps, going for it, getting to the top of the mountain. And so this, I would suggest, is why we stress the search for wisdom, not or the work of gaining illumination or enlightenment. It's there in the stories. But the real goal, I would suggest, is wisdom. And that is encapsulated in the very word druid. You know the way it's made from these two syllables, dru and id. Dru meaning uh, coming from all sorts of Indo, proto-Indo-European uh, roots for a tree, specifically probably an oak tree, uh, or possibly the term steadfast, so the two etymologies at least, the tree, the oak tree, steadfast. And then id, root uh, from which we get the words words like wisdom and witness and and yes wisdom knowledge so a druid is one with knowledge of the oak a knower of the oak a wood sage a forest sage uh, somebody who is a wise person of nature so i see i've been I've been talking for 18 minutes, and I, I, I think that's probably enough. You know those statistics you read about how uh, we only retain a very small amount of information, and uh, if you give a, a long talk, uh, you know, I don't know, 80% of it gets forgotten. So I reckon I, reckon I shouldn't talk anymore. Uh, but I've really enjoyed doing this. Um, I, I really want to, to do this some more. I don't know how often I should do this. So I'll have to kind of tune in. If you have some ideas, maybe once a week, I don't, I don't know. Um, do, do type in. And maybe, you know, what happens with these recordings is they, uh, they stay up. So, so uh, it'll, be, it'll stay on the, on the Facebook page, I believe. And I think I can transfer it to YouTube as well. So please do make any contributions you, you wish. If you want to, if it stimulates some ideas or you want to give your particular take on it or ideas, you can type them in and there's no hurry. There's no uh, pressure for time. Uh, but uh, it's uh, lovely to be here. I'm going to finish in the way that we started, which is by closing my eyes so I'm not distracted by the technology and just feeling you, I glanced up at the screen then and it said there are 235 people. The 235 people around the world are all, are all sitting and we're all of like mind, I think, all tuning in, all people of like mind, following or interested in the path of Druid spirituality. And so it's lovely to sit here with you, to be here with you. And I look forward to reading your comments. When I switch this off now, I'm going to go through all the comments and look at them. And I know more will come in it over the coming hours and days. So lots of love, uh, lots of good wishes, 
And uh, I hope, you know, we can do this again. Okay. Bye.